hello people i hope you all are doing extremely well first of all if you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed our channel till now then guys please subscribe kar lo and you can follow me on other platforms as well the link is there in the description itself so yeah we are back with another podcast and i believe if you are a front end developer or an aspiring front end developer this video is going to be really helpful for you in this video we'll be talking about dsa system design uh, resources for front end developers and to have a fruitful and healthy discussion on these topics i have invited the right person on my youtube channel vedant jain who is currently working as a ste2 so you are going to learn a lot from this video so be with us till the end of this video on that note let's get started uh hi vedant thank you so much for accepting my invitation and being here on my channel so i believe we can start directly with the question itself so can you please share your expertise and experience as a front end developer uh thank you so much somya so uh, my expertise lies in basic clean front end uh i work on technologies right uh, react js and next js uh and typically my core uh, is javascript okay okay so uh Uh, thank you for mentioning that. Well, uh, DSA, you must have heard about this, right? So, uh, DSA is very important when it comes to technical interviews, right? So, how important it is uh, with the perspective of technical interviews, right? So, how important it is for front end developers. So, what's your take on that? Uh, yes, I guess uh, uh, DSA is a must for any interview, any technical interview, and uh, specifically for front end, the questions are not much around. uh core dsa but they are kind of twisted around uh, javascript uh you can expect question uh, you can uh, expect uh, questions uh, on a level of uh, lead code easy to lead code medium and uh, also uh, you can expect a good amount of questions on concepts of javascript that are blended well with uh, data structures and algorithms so uh, again there are two uh, sides of it uh, so if you are targeting big uh, tech big tech companies like uh, google facebook and uh some uh, some part of it lashin as well uh, so they are asking uh, data structures and algorithms but if you uh, are targeting uh, startups or uh, some service based companies then chances of dsa being asked in your uh, interview are really less okay 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 very very insightful i must say uh, so uh, right now you can see uh, what the current situation is uh, is in it right multiple layoffs is being taking place right so it's very important when it comes to the skills part you have to be very updated with the skills so that the chances of getting laid off can sort of reduce for you so what do you believe what is the important skills or technologies one should focus on if the if someone is an aspiring front end developer or already working as a front end developer and looking to upskill uh, or a kind of transition uh yeah sure i can definitely tell you what are the things uh you can study so uh, you can start off with the uh, basics of javascript uh, it can include a uh, closure hoisting event loop uh, call stack a difference between var let and const uh, async functions arrow functions so these comprise just comprises the basics of javascript once you are comfortable with it you can now practice output based questions uh, like on javascript as well like a promises set type outs and if these if these are immediately invoked functions so once you are comfortable with output based question then you have to practice um, questions on polyfills uh, polyfills are like you have to So let's like, suppose there is a utility function in JavaScript like array dot map. Now the interviewer will ask you to create a function that behaves exactly like array dot map, and it should uh, pass all the test cases. So a few prominent questions asked on polyfills are uh, promise dot all, uh, array dot map, memoization, and uh, reduce. So once you are comfortable with promises, then uh, you can also uh, touch up the uh, call apply and bind part of JavaScript. So here you can understand how the this reference works and how it varies from a function declaration to arrow functions so now this was all for javascript now comes the css as well because uh, as freshers you can expect some good questions uh, conceptual questions on a uh, css uh, like uh, what are flex boxes what are grids uh, what is the difference between flex box and grid and what is position absolute a fixed and static and you can expect uh, like uh, situational based questions as well like let's suppose there are three divs nested inside each other and 
uh, the inner boost is having position fixed and then the upper one is having uh, absolute then static so what how would the div look like what will be the position and all so this comprises up till now javascript and css now comes we come to the frameworks on framework uh, you have to like my expertise in is in react so in react you can uh, brush up the concepts of like what is virtual dom how does the various hooks uh, behave in react like a use effect user state uh, what are the cleanup functions then the life cycle and how to create a custom hooks so once you are done with react then you have to also prepare for machine coding around as well then again you have to practice uh, so many questions in react for example uh, you have to implement a counter you have to implement a to do list or a progress bar or a navigation sidebar now once all of this is done then comes dsa uh, then where you can practice lead code easy to medium questions and then after all of these uh, all of this you will be uh, interview ready okay okay i i must say that pretty much you covered all the concepts not just the uh, like technology specific thing but the main main concepts that as a fresher one should be aware of so uh, really yes. you have explained well well uh, like i have known through your channel guys let me tell you that he is having his channel uh, at the red chairs cafe so you can just check it out so i have gone through your channel and you have pretty much, pretty much created multiple amazing videos when it comes to system design and even the coding part right so system design is also equally important for a developer so how important do you believe it is for a front end developer and what are the key aspects or key concepts that you believe a front end developer should be aware of um yes a very good question uh, so me so a uh, system design i guess is something which uh, someone learns over the course of time as they are in the industry or they are making projects so system design is basically around optimizing your current application by using various uh, techniques that are uh, like uh, surfaced over the uh, in the it field uh, so talking about front end uh, you basically uh, try first of all there are two parts of system design one is lld and one is hld so low level system design talks about software and hld talks about the interaction between uh, uh system components like services and microservices and ec2 instances and other stuffs so primarily uh, for sd2s and uh, senior software engineers interviews mainly are uh, between uh, lld's only and you can expect uh, hld rounds for staff engineer or engineering manager or architect rounds so uh, talking about lld uh, so you can take example or let's say you are a uh, front end developer and you are asked to implement a type ahead search for example uh, if you go to linkedin and type someone's name auto suggestion uh, comes right uh, with all of the names the images their uh, names and other stuffs so uh, that is also a part uh, a whole system design in, in itself so you have to optimize the api let's suppose i type uh, saum by saumya so i should not hit uh, api call for every character i should uh wait for user to finish typing and then make the api call and let's say if in uh, if the current design is like uh, they are showing images on the left and the text beside it in future it is possible that uh, the design may change right so uh, they want to show images on the right or text should go uh, bottom or whatsoever so your uh, component or structure should be dynamic enough to incorporate any kind of design system that can be feed uh, into the system so that it it can render anything you want uh, and this is this should be generic enough so that uh, let's say uh, there are two teams in a company so if one uh, com if one team develops a component it should be very much reusable and customizable by second team as well so these are the small factors that we look out for a uh, lld round and again uh, it is something you will learn of experience there is no definite guide for it although there are uh, certain concepts you can learn uh, when you are beginning for uh, system design when you begin to learn system design you can uh, uh, basically start learning from uh, network optimization you can start learning from image optimization how you can optimize images how you can optimize fonts uh, then if you are writing react application then there are also various design patterns uh, in react so given uh, the problem statement you have to identify which type of design pattern will fit uh, for your uh, task or the question that you are given in, in the interview so 
this is the overall idea for system design and it is really important uh, for uh, SD2 and onwards. So SD1s are generally not our system design because uh, they don't have much experience in the field. But for SD2s and onward, you can expect uh, system design round in your interviews for sure. Okay, okay, got it, got it. So, like you mentioned about these points, uh, when it comes to you know DSA, we discussed we discussed about system design, right? So I believe there are lots of resources that one can consume and learn from them. But it's still, you know, the expertise that you are currently having, and you also create the content, right? So if you can just suggest some resources that you refer to for learning purpose, right? Uh, that you have referred basically, so that will be helpful for the audience. Uh, yes, uh, I guess uh, for uh, starters, uh, like when I was back in the college before I started this JS Cafe and other stuff. So I was uh, uh, majorly learning things like first is the uh, React's own documentation that is a good learning resource. For uh, concepts of JavaScript and all, you can refer to the MDN Mozilla documents, MDN website, that is a second resource. And also uh, when I was in college, I used to... Uh, do a uh, projects uh, based on the Udemy courses. Uh, so that is also one resource for you. Also, there were many popular YouTube channels back at that time, uh, like uh, Code Evolution and other stuff. I don't remember the names now, it, it's a long uh, time, but uh, again, you can refer to any uh, YouTube channel or you can also, there's a free code camp uh, website as well. And they have a YouTube channel also, you can refer to that. Uh, as well. So, yeah, I guess these are the pretty much resources. Uh, Vedant, I believe, yeah, that's it from my side. These were some of the questions I was having and I was willing to discuss with you. So, thank you so much for answering all of them. But again, people, if you are having any doubt, any query, or anything that you want to ask, you can just drop it in the comment section. And, and I believe that Vedant will be responding for them. So, thank you so much. Bye bye.